Right. Namaste and good morning to all of you. Let's start our Saturday class with some prayers. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasmei Shri Guru Venama, Om Bhur Bhavaswa, Tatsavitra Varenayam, Margo Deva Sedhi Mahi, Dio yo naha pracho deyat asto ma sat gamya tamso ma jyotir gamya mrityur ma amritam gamya om se navavatu se navunatu se viryam karvavahi te jasvi navadhi tamastu ma vidvi shavahi om shanti 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 yo. This morning when I was uh, uh, teaching the kids class, uh, one young girl, uh, six years old, uh, she said, I like to memorize these mantras. Uh, that way I can uh, recite them anywhere I want to. So a young girl, she understands. Uh, I mean, she, she memorizes the meanings also in English. Uh, so not only the singing part. So we should do that too. We should learn from the children. Learn from, okay? So let's start our Saturday class, Vivek Chudamani. And uh, we'll see in this segment, uh, Shankaracharya is talking about uh, the experience of uh, selfhood. experience. So we are on verse number 472 and I think in your books 471 and that's where we ended our last week's class. Noble hearted renunciated who are rid of attachments, who have given up all sense enjoyments, who are calm and controlled realize this supreme truth and at the end they gain bliss supreme as a result of their self-realization so what do we get after self-realization bliss blissful living not just a temporary joy not just the ups and downs eternal bliss that's exactly what lord krishna said in Bhagavad Gita. And that's what Shankaracharya is saying. But in this uh, simple looking verse, uh, he is giving us the practical methods for sadhana also again. Nirast ragaha. That is uh, the very first word in this verse. So that means you have control over your desires, worldly desires. Nirast, no ras in them. No ras. See, in our desires, we find ras or we look for the ras and that's why we run after them. So this sadhak has understood that there's no ras in this temporary world. We nirast bhogaha. The idea of indulging and seeking a fulfillment in the world is completely us Completely asta. And then outcome of this is Shantman. Shantaha. The next beautiful word, Sudantaha. That means not allowing the mind to go into the past. We often say the dead past. So past indulgences, not even thinking about them. Then he calls these people Mahant, the high-souled people. And he says, in order to reach their effort was needed. That's why these are called Yatya. 
And if we keep on doing the yatan, keep on putting the effort into this sadhana, all the vasanas, they dry up. And once the vasanas are dried up, what do we see? Our real nature. That's what self-realization is. Knowing yourself, realizing yourself. And that is eternal bliss. Okay, so beautiful verse, very powerful verse. These are all terms we are familiar with. So nothing new in here. But he's emphasizing the practical methods of the sadhana. Now let's look at the next verse, 473. Bhavan api idam paratatvam atmanaha savrupam anandghanam vicharye Viduye moham swamanaha prakalipitam muktaha kritartho bhavatu prabuddhaha. Bhavan. Bhavan means that means you. And over here it really means you are a glorious seeker, Bhavan. Api means also. Idam means this. Paratatvam, surpassing truth. Atmanaha Savarupam, the real nature of the Atma, the Self. Anandghanam, which is bliss absolute. Anandghan. Vicharye, discriminating, like a vichar. Vidhuye, shaking off. Moham, the delusion. Swamana prakalitam, created by your own mind. So it's like imaginations of your own mind. Muktaha, liberated, freed. Kritartham. Kritarth means the fulfillment. So a person who has reached the fulfillment of his own life, Kritartha. Bhavatu, maybe. Prabuddha, being illumined steadily. Prabuddha. You too. So as a sadhak, He's telling us, you to discriminate this. So what he talked about in the previous verse. So that means think about it. Be established in it, this kind of a sadhana. This is surpassing truth. The real nature of the Atma, which is a bliss absolute. And Shake off the delusion created by your own mind. This moha your mind has created. Shake it off. Be liberated and illumined and reach the fulfillment of your life. So he is telling us what the goal is. How do we really feel when we reach at that goal? And what kind of a sadhana we need to do? And he keeps on encouraging us. Because if we remember in the earlier part of this great book, the Guru promised the student who surrendered to him, surrendered at the feet of the Guru. And Guru said, don't be fearful. There is no danger for you. There is a method to cross this uh, sansar. And I will tell you what that method is. Because by following that method, so many have crossed this uh, Bhavsagar. And you can do it too, but you have to do the sadhana. So now, again, after explaining all those methods, uh, he is saying that. Uh, 
you have to directly experience it and you can experience it and you must experience it. You need to go completely beyond this temporary world, which is like a projection of your own mind. You deluded yourself that you are this, this, and this, which you are not. You are that blissful Atma alone, Ananda Ghana. So that's why he says, may you also become fulfilled, Kritartha, fully awakened to the higher plane of consciousness. Okay, so he's encouraging us again and again. And at the same time, he keeps on giving us the methods to do it too. Let's look at verse number 474. Samadhinaha sadhu vi nishchalaha atmanaha pashyatam tatvam safut bodh chakshusha ni sanshyam samyag avekshit Shrutaha padartho napunar vikalpyate. Samadhina. Samadhi is that true absorption in the self. That's a samadhi. Sadhu. Vi nishchal atmanaha. So with that samadhi, in that by which the individual is perfectly still, vi nishchal. Perfectly still. And sadhu is that person. Pashyatma, realize the truth of the self. Pashyatma tatvam, tatvam is that truth, that reality, the essence. Safut bodh chakshusha, by the clear eye of the wisdom. Ni sanshyam. Free from all doubts. Samyag avekshitakshya. Samyag is like a totally perfect inward, perfectly understood. Shrutaha. Shruta is the scriptural words, shrutis. So, shruta padartho, meaning of the words of the scriptures. So whatever is given in the Shrutis, the meaning of that, understand it. Na punar vikalpyate, do not doubt again. So he says, perceive the nature of the self with the eye of perfect knowledge through samadhi. So that perfect knowledge or the clarity will, you will see only when you're in Samadhi. Because outside knowledge which we gather, there could be little contradiction or seemingly contradiction because we are trying to understand with this limited intellect. But in Samadhi, we get that knowledge which is perfect. So that's why the meditation is so important. In order to reach Samadhi, we got to reach the meditation. In order to reach the meditation, we have to do the concentration. In order to do the concentration, we need to take some time out and sit in concentration also. So dharna, dhyan, and Samadhi, that is the sequence. But in Samadhi, what happens? He says, perceive the nature of the self with the eye of perfect knowledge through Samadhi. Where the mind has been brought to complete stillness. Safut bodha chakshusha. If the declaration of Shruti are perfectly understood without a trace of doubt, it can lead to no more skepticism. That means you will not have any more doubts. 
you will know what Shruti is saying. You will not say that this is Shruti said this and that Shruti said that. No. All the Shruti, Shrutis are the words of God. Those Rishis in the Samadhi, they saw that. They heard that. So if you make your mind that steady, that clear, you will know that. You will experience it. So steady mind is needed for that. And a steady mind is one which does not oscillate under the fascinations of this objective world. Today we see this, tomorrow we do that and our mind keeps on shaking. That is not a steady mind. Sometimes it gets oscillated just by looking at the objects and then the ideas, then the emotions, feelings, we just keep on losing that ground. So we have to train our mind. And that's what we do during concentration and meditation. Train your mind, which does not get disturbed. But to train the mind so that mind withdraw from the storms of the passions. Nirast bhogaha. Seeing here, the word seeing when they use pashe, that does not mean just with these eyes we see, the outer eyes. This pashe really means when mind is so quietened, it can apprehend the reality beyond all doubts. And that's why it says sees pashyam. The mind sees this great self with a clear eye of the knowledge. Clear eye of the knowledge means with a steady mind and intellect. Remember that. Clear eye does not mean that you put some kind of drops in your eyes. Clear eye means with a steady mind and intellect. We got to look at it. And mind gets oscillated with this outer world. And how does the intellect get oscillated? With the doubts. You hear this and then tomorrow you hear something else and your intellect gets disturbed. So that's why he used the word Shruti Padartha. If you have understood the meaning of the Mahavakyas, theme of the scriptures, then you have the intellectual appreciation of the self. Because Shrutis, they talk about the self. When you experience reality, you know your knowledge of the scriptures will be confirmed then. So first you read it in the scriptures, you hear it from Guru's mouth, then you experience it, then after experiencing it, no doubt at all. So first to faith, faith in the scriptures, faith in the words of the Guru, and then do what Guru is telling us to do, and then experiencing it, then you're firmly established in it. It's as simple as that. Let's look at next one, 475. So was say a vidyaha band some band moksha satya jnana anand rup atma labdau shastram yuktihi deshiko uktihi parvanam cha antaha siddha swa anubhuti parmanam. So was say a vidya band some band moksha. That is the very first line. So say of oneself, a vidya, ignorance. Moksha is the liberation. Sambandh is related to. So together this line means through liberation from one's bondage. Band is the bondage. So through liberation from one's bondage of ignorance, Related to oneself. Okay. 
So when you break the words, it's very easy. But then you got to see what those words, how they are related to each other through liberation from one's bondage of ignorance related to oneself. Satya Gyan Anand Roop Atam Labdhau. This is the second line. Satya. Satya means the existence. Gyan is the knowledge. Anand is the bliss. Labdhu means realized. So when the self, the existence, knowledge, bliss is realized. Okay. Then after that he says, Shastram, scriptures. Yukti, logical reasoning. Deshik, uktihi, the words of the Guru. Parmanam, proof. Cha means and. Antaha siddha, one's own inner mind's accomplishment. Okay, antaha at the end. Sva anubhuti, the internal realization or experience of the self. Sva anubhuti, experience of the self. Parmanam, proof. When the self, the existence, knowledge, bliss. So what is the self? Satachit Anand. That is a self. Because self is nothing other than the Brahma. Brahma is Satchit Anand. Self is Satchit Anand too. When the self, the existence, knowledge, bliss is realized. Through liberation from one's bondage of ignorance. See, very clearly he is telling us in simple terms what liberation is. Liberation is the bondage which we have with the ignorance. I am this, this and this. I want this, this and this. That is all ignorance. So when the self, the existence, knowledge, bliss is realized through liberation from one's bondage of ignorance, then the scriptures, logical reasoning, the words of the teacher, these are proofs. The subjective experience of one's own concentrated mind is yet another proof. So that means they all are saying the same thing. And then you will realize the same thing too. All we have to do is Liberate from the bondage, from this uh, ignorance. To cut these ties. So liberation is defined as liberation from the bondage of one's contact with the non-apprehension. Avidya bandha sabandha moksha. So this is a beautiful definition of liberation for us. So that doesn't mean liberation is when we leave this body. A person can be liberated right over here, living in the body, any kind of a body, any place. We got to just learn how to stay out of this ignorance. When there are misapprehensions, the person is bound. Bound with the identifications. And that's a pretty sorrowful condition, actually. Because a jeev is free. The real nature of our self is Satchit Anand, but we feel bound. Avidya can be ended only on the apprehension of the reality. Satya, Gyan, Anand, Roop, Atma, Labdhav. Because it remains the same. Satya means which remains the same in all three times. 
all three periods of time. That is satya. Something which keeps on changing, that's not a satya. And what remains the same in three periods of time, past, present, and future, is the self, which is part of Brahma. Everything else keeps on changing. This is the pure knowledge. This is the knowledge, the scriptures, they say that all other kinds of knowledge are possible because of this knowledge. This mouth can speak because of this self. Eyes can see because of the self. This intellect can understand all this because of this self. So this knowledge illuminates everything else. And they call it a anantam also, infinite. It is infinite. It's not small. It's not limited. Body is limited. Everything in the objective world is limited, but Atma is not limited. And then he means, he gives us the authorities from which knowledge of the self is gained. The Shastra, because we have not realized it, that's why we need to learn it from the scriptures, Shastra, Shruti, because all this is recorded there. We always go to some kind of a authority. Anything we, we don't know, we go to the authority. Over here, the recorded declaration of the realization by those seers is in the Shrutis. Then he says, sure, you can use your logical thinking if you want to, yukti. Then, deshiko ukti. Words of the learned masters, the guru. Your teacher. So by reading books, by logic, to some extent you can understand. But the words of the Guru help us to grasp the theme thoroughly. Because our reasoning is limited. The books are inert. They don't talk to us. They cannot answer our questions. They cannot remove the doubts. But when we go to the Guru, Guru puts more light into it, explains it to us. We can understand it better. So that's why these three are needed. If you, what you have read and understood by logical thinking. And what has been told to you by the Guru are all in line. Then you have really understood it properly. There's no fluctuation in your intellect, no sunshine. You can really take off towards that experience of the reality with the help of all this. Still sadhana is needed, but it makes sense to you, sense. Let's look at next one. Bandho moksha, moksha hacha, tripti hischa, Chintaha arogye kushud adya. So eneva vedyaha yat gyanam parisham anumanikam. Bandho. Band means the bondage. Moksh liberation. Cha means end. Tripti, contentment. Cha means end. Chintaha, anxiety. Arogye. Health. See, rog is disease. A rogya means health. Kushuda, hunger. Adhya, etc. Swa in ev vidya, to be known only by oneself. Yat jnanam, because knowledge. Paresham, by others. Anu mana. Anuma nikam is indirect or inferred. So he says bondage and liberation. 
contentment and anxiety, health, hunger, etc., are known only by the person concerned. So that means you have to experience it yourself. Others have knowledge of these by mere inference. Inference. Okay. So our experiences of bondage, liberation, contentment are just like these, what he's talking about. He's giving us some of these conditions which we go through, worry. Person will say, it's my worry, only I can understand. You cannot understand my worry. Health also, hunger also. You can tell somebody you're hungry, but they cannot feel your hunger. So these are to be experienced by ourselves. My hunger cannot be experienced by you. My worries, you cannot understand. Okay, so this is what he's talking about over here. So just as physical pains and the hungers can be known only through subjective experience, the same way the reality has to be experienced by all of us individually. So nobody can say that I'll meditate for you. Nobody can say that I'll eat for you and you will get full. We have to do it ourselves. We can only imagine what it could be like, but knowledge will come only through and direct experience. That's what he's trying to tell us. So your experience. Next one. Tatasthitaha bodhyanti Gurvaha shrutyo yatha Pragya ev tared vidvanihi Ashva Anu grihitya Tatasthita Teach while remaining on the shore Tatasthita bodhyanti So teach while remaining on the shore Gurvaha, master, the guru, Shrutyo, scriptures, Yatha, as. Pragya Eva Tared must cross by their own wisdom. Pragya is the wisdom. Ev means must or alone. Tared, Tared means cross. Vidwani, the learned. Ishwar Anugrihitya, supported by Ishwar's grace, God's grace. Anugraha means grace, Ripa. Standing apart, the teachers and the scriptures instruct the disciple. Standing apart, they really do not get you. Involved in it, they stand apart. So, the Tastita. They do teach, but they don't get involved. Standing apart, the teachers and the scriptures instruct the disciple. The man of realization crosses over avidya by illumination and the grace of God. So whatever teacher is teaching, and teachers always teach from the scriptures. Even Lord Krishna, when he was teaching Arjuna, he was saying that the old yogis, old seers, they did this. And I'm telling you to do this. Even Avatar is saying it. Because truth is the same. Truth doesn't change. Sometimes the language changes. Examples can change. But truth is the same. So the gurus, they use the scriptures and they help the students 
but they do not get involved. They stand apart and the, the, the student gets illumined through those teachings and sure there's a grace of God also. Both. It's not just only our effort. Effort is needed. But if we are applying effort, then God is showering his grace also, anugraha. So this is what he's trying to tell us. So first we have to take an authority or get a guidance from the authority. That is what intelligent disciple is. By using all that, they can go beyond this illusion and towards the illumination. Okay, so Anugraha, that's very, uh, my own Guruji, he has written one whole scripture. He's, he called it Anugraha Kanda. It's like a Kripa, how much Kripa is needed and how much it's bestowed upon by the Gurus and the Gods. So, and Ishwar is actually who controls, regulates, orders everything in the cosmos. That's called Ishwar, Ishwar. Ishwar is the one who's Lord in all of us. Sometimes we use the word Paramatma for that. Our own vasanas or the dirt of the vasanas can be removed with the light of that Ishwar. But we have to do our sadhana. A person who has done sadhana for a sufficiently long time knows that how that anugraha or that grace is felt when we do our part. It's almost like when we are, we have a dirty dish. When you start washing it, only then you can see that how clean it is. So this is what we need to do: clean our own chitta. But help of the teachers and help of the scriptures and the, the anugraha of Ishwar. In fact, even to get a guru in life, that is an anugraha of Ishwar. Often we say, where is the guru? Where is the guru? Pray to God. Pray to God. Please take me to the guru. Show me the guru. Let's look at next one, 478. Swa anubhutyaha. Swayam Gyatvaha Swam Atmanam Akhanditam Samsiddhi Samukham Tishthet Nirvikalap Atmanaha Atmani Swa Anubhutiha Through realization is like your own experience, own realization. Swayam Gyatvaha. Gyatva means realizing. Knowing. Gyatva. Swam one's own. Atmanam. Oneself. Akhanditam. Absolute or unlimited. Akhanditam. See, khand means part. Akhand means absolute. Sam Siddhi, a realized perfect one. So all perfectly accomplished, perfectly realized. Sam Mukham, Sam Mukham means face to face with the essence of existence. Face to face, Sam Mukham. Tishtet would remain. Nirvikalap Atmana, with the mind free from all concepts of dualism. Atmani with regard to the mind within. Knowing his own absolute self through realization, becoming perfect, a person should stand face to face 
before the atma with the mind free from all concepts of dualism because when there's a duality me and mine this and that then there's a dualism free from that let's shake it off so the self is apprehended in yourself that's what he's saying so right here and you need to do it by yourself but you got to make sure that your mind and intellect they are unagitated they are steady then you can sit face to face with one self in one self by one self so that means you have to do it yourself sit and see it's all inside you so to sit face to face is to become one with that sampukam let's do one more vedant siddhant niruktir esha brahm ev jeevah saklam jagat ch akhand roop sthitir ev moksha ho brahm advitye shrutya pramanam vedant siddhant nirukti that means the final opinion of all vedantic discussions vedant siddhant nirukti nirukti esha means definitive conclusion esha means this 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 is the definitive conclusion brahm eva jeevah brahm eva means brahm alone jeev the individual being saklam in its entirety jagat the universe cha means and saklam jagat cha अखंड रूप स्थिति एव टू बी रूटेड इन द इनडिविजिबल एंटिटी ब्रह्म अलोन ब्रह्म रूप स्थिति एव एव मींस अलोन मोक्ष लिबरेशन ब्रह्म अद्वितीय विद रिगार्ड टू द स्टेटमेंट कंसर्निंग नॉन ड्यूअल ब्रह्म श्रुतिया परमानम श्रुतिया द श्रुति द स्क्रिप्चर्स द प्राइमरी स्क्रिप्चर्स परमानम द मेन सोर्स ऑफ नॉलेज दैट मीन्स द अथॉरिटी द फाइनल ओपिनियन ऑफ ऑल वेदांतिक डिस्कशन इज दैट द जीव एज वेल एज द इंटायर यूनिवर्स आर ब्रह्म अलोन aham brahmasmi is only brahm that liberation means to be rooted in brahm the indivisible entity the statement that brahm is non dual has its authority in shruti in shruti so we have to have a firm faith in the shruti all the upanishads the essence of all the upanishads are the teachings of the vedas so upanishads are like a concluding portion of the vedas so upanishads say that jeev the individuality is brahm alone jeev jagat the world of polarity is also brahm it has come out of brahm purnam ada purnam idam and state of experience of this one reality where there is no duality is liberation the seeker by his sadhana merges with the infinite the absence of polarity is the experience of reality and he says the authority authority is the scriptures shruti and the upanishads they declare that also 
Now, next week, when we start with the next verse, we'll see that how by practicing on this, the student has realized this. So from there also, we should get some encouragement. If that student did, we the students also need to do what we are told to do so that we can have this experience too. Realization. We can also feel this bliss. Stop running after the temporary joys. Feel the bliss, no matter where we are. There could be happy occasion, not so happy occasion. Still you feel the bliss. No matter what happens. So this is what we'll see next week when we sit down together. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Visheshyate Om Shanti 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 Om Thank you very much.